Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to look at an Irish reel called The Mountain Road. <laughs> Mountain Road was a request for Mel, and this is a very well known tune, it's well worth learning. I'm going to give you two versions, uh, a very simple version and a three part version based on the playing of Kevin Burke. This tune was written by the fiddler Michael Gorman, uh, a Sligo fiddler who lived in London and Manchester. I think he moved to London in 1939. Um, he wrote six parts to this tune, but the, it's normally only played as a two part tune. So the simple version is going to be two parts, and the Kevin Burke version will be three parts. Uh, unlike a lot of reels, this is always, or nearly always, bowed straight, which is to say, uh, it's not played... It's not played da ba da ba da ba da it's played straight... That kind of feel. Uh, this is something uh, probably no one will ever tell you. Uh, it'll never be discussed, but um, as a beginner it's important, I think, to be aware of the fact that there is such a thing as a straight reel and a swung reel. And uh, some reels can be played both ways, uh, some reels are almost always played one way or the other way. Um, this tune is interesting in that um, almost every bar starts with a, a whole note or, or crotchet. <coughs> Um, another feature of this tune is the string crossing, which happens in uh, bar one. There's a lot of tunes that do that, and there's various different approaches to how you bow that. If you look at my video on um, Drowsy Maggie, that goes into several different options for, for pl uh, playing string crossing. Uh, for this simple version, I'm going to give you a very simple approach to the bowing. Uh, and one other thing to say about this tune is there are no repeats, so it's an A section straight into a B section. Okay, so uh, really slowly I will give you the, uh, the A section. One, two, three... <laughs> So for most of the bowing, I'm doing, um, I'm just doing one slur in each bar, here, and then separate. Here, I'm doing, because I want to end on an up bow, so I'm slurring that there. two slurs and then four separates. But uh, uh, there's always lots of different ways to bow this. Uh, next section, one, two, three, four. Ending on a note like that, it's designed to go back to the beginning. If you are actually ending, you might end like that, or you might add an extra note on the end so that you're actually ending on a D and not an E. Right, let's do all of that again with the backing. Bowing like 
like this, we are emphasising the first note of each bow. And that's good for consistency um, when you're learning a tune like this. It's good to make it simple and keep the um, keep the same beat going through each bar. Eventually, you want to be able to have more variety in your bowing and put emphasis in different places. And that's what we're going to look at in this second version. So uh, I looked at Kevin Burke's video of this. He does the three parts. Um, I'm not going to do the same bowing as he does, but the ornamentation and the arrangement are pretty much the same. And I'm going to use three particular bowing patterns. Uh, for the string crossing, I'm going to do... Um, so, separate bows. So we're emphasising da, da, da. For each emphasised note, like that, I'm, I'm playing two strings, so I'm keeping my second finger on, and every emphasised note is, has a drone. Now for the second bar, this is um, a similar pattern to what's called in America the Georgia Shuffle. Again, on all of the emphasised notes, we're playing two strings, um, and what we got is an emphasis on doing tack, do do tack, do do tack, do do tack. So it's a, it's like a backbeat, and this adds a lot of drive to a tune. You could actually play the whole tune. It's an interesting exercise, but it's a bit tedious doing it like that. So I'm alternating at the beginning between the first pattern, and then the second one. And then in quite a few other bars, I'm doing a 3 3 2 pattern. So this is a bit of kind of a syncopation feel. Three slurred, three slurred, and two separate. And that, that's one of uh, quite a few different possibilities for um, bowing reels. Uh, different combinations of twos and threes and separates. But this is one of my favourites, the three, three, two. So that's going to occur, for example, in bar 28. Uh, and probably in quite a few other places as well. Okay, I'll go slowly through the tune and I'll stop at each place where I need to explain something. Now here we're doing a roll and we're slurring into the roll. Um, if you didn't do the roll then you wouldn't hear the second note. The so that the, the roll is emphasising the beginning of the next bar. Okay, here we've got a treble or bowed triplet. Here we've got a, a, a cut, an uppercut, um, so we're using the fourth finger. And the reason for doing it here is that we have two notes the same. And we, uh, by uh, putting that cut in, you are kind of separating those two notes because otherwise they could get lost into one another. If the pipes were playing this, they wouldn't be able to uh, separate those two notes at all. It would just sound like this. Like that. There we've got a little drone on the D. Okay, so 
Okay, here we got two triplets. And then a roll. Into the third section. Here we got a, a cut. Another cut. A roll on that D. And that ending obviously is another one that is leading back to the beginning and wouldn't be a suitable actual finish. Something like that would be for, for the finishing. So I'll go through it all one more time and then we'll do it with the backing. One, two, three. idea to check in advance um, whether you're going to be doing a two-part or a three-part uh, because as I said earlier uh, it's normally played as a two-part uh, so unless you are leading the set or you're playing with your own band or doing it solo then um, the three-part may be confusing to other people um, I hope you enjoyed this if you'd like a copy of the sheet music then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email and I will send you a PDF copy if you would like a, a zip file with all uh, over 300 PDF files from all of my videos, then do join me on Patreon, and that's one of the many benefits you can get there. Thank you for watching, I'll see you again soon.